Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bella Gamer, and today I am pleased to bring you one of my favorite mechs in all of Lancer. I'm uh, my second favorite mech. My favorite is Big Sal. Someone someone corrected me or not corrected me, but uh, reminded me of the name Saladin. It's always a name that I always forget, but the Drake is a very, very close second to me. Big tanky boy, big machine gun boy, my boy, boy. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and talk about why I love the Drake so much and as well why you should as well. So first and foremost, it's a size two mech. So it's a chunky boy. Not as chunky as the Barbarossa, but pretty chunky. Where the real chunk comes in, though, are actually the stats, which will go down here. And then I'll move my camera real quick. All right, so. You can see here that the... Drake is one of three mech frames, technically two if you count one of them because it's a variant, that have three armor starting out. But what the Drake has over the Genghis, or the World Killer at Genghis, which are the only other ones that have three, is eight HP compared to their six HP. So a little bit more HP than normal and way more armor than average. The Drake is one of the flat out tankiest at base mechs in the game. Very, very good and very powerful, but similar to the Barbarossa, as we talked about before, their evasion and E-defenses are six. This mech is meant to be hit and not much else. So that being the case, it's very easy to hit this mech, but how much damage you do, especially considering that a large number of weapons in the game don't even do three damage pretty much at base makes the Drake incredibly dense and hard to take down. Now with a higher or on the higher end of average for heat capacity and an average sensor range pretty much, unlike the Barbarossa, there's actually no penalty to tech attack here. So if you wanted to do a little bit of tech action with the Drake, I mean, I don't know why you would, but you definitely could, or at least more than the Barbarossa. The repair capacity is on the higher end of average as well. Save target is average and speed is below average at a measly three, which, well, I shouldn't say measly three. The The average speed is like four to five, I believe, and three just is just under that. Uh, five system points as well, so this mech is not as customizable as other mechs, but, you know, three armor and eight HP base makes, like, if you go into hull with the Drake, you're just going to have a mech that's incredibly hard to deal with, especially considering the traits. So the traits we have here, heavy frame, similar actually to the Barbarossa. The, the Drake is a chunky boy and thus cannot be push pulled, knocked prone or knocked back by smaller characters. Now, this is really good because this also applies to weapon systems or the like, not just things like ramming or grappling. So. Heavy frame makes the Drake very stalwart, very easy to trudge through the middle of the combat field. Blast plating is very interesting because rather than just a specific type of damage, instead the Drake has kind of like a, a plate design that mitigates area damage. So the Drake is actually really good when it comes to going up against a lot of artillery mechs that have blast as it takes reduced damage from those mechs, no matter what kind of damage it is, whether it's kinetic, explosive, or the like. This is genuinely really good, and it makes you want to use cover more often than not, especially because one of the easiest ways to get around cover is blast, you know, arcing and blast, of course. The Drake completely counters that. So unless you're hitting the Drake directly on, it's just going to be mitigating the damage, which with its high armor value means the Drake can sit in explosions and take almost no damage, which is really good. Now, obviously, like many other heavy frame mechs, this is a slow mech, so it has a difficulty when it comes to agility checks and saves. But the Drake also has Guardian, which allows 
adjacent allies to use as hard cover. And that's kind of like the purpose of the Drake is to walk through the combat field and have allies it's escorting be completely protected while they shoot around the Drake, more or less. So looking at the weapon mounts, oh, face is kind of in the way. Same thing with the Barbarossa. I'm not a big fan of having the double. I'm not a big fan of having the double main mount into heavy mounts. I wish it was like a, an ox or main ox or flex or something. I don't know, but it's okay because at least the Drake is like a big gun shield wielding style of mech. So that's kind of it's it's kind of okay. And it, it uses lots of cannons or super heavy cannons. It's okay. It, it's fine. It's got good firepower. And of course, with its high defensive values, you can't give it too much offensive capability or you're just going to have an unstoppable juggernaut. Not that many people would complain. So let's talk about the core power here. I'm going to hide my cam for a second. So the core power fortress here is really good. What it does is you essentially unfold out into a fortress. Uh, you create two lines of size one hardcover. And additionally, you become immobilized. You are in constant benefit from hardcover, even out in the open gaining complete immunity to knockback prone and involuntary movement no matter the size of the enemy mech. When you brace, you may take a full action on your next turn instead of just a quick action, which pretty much in this form means that you can just ignore a sentry the penalty from brace since you're not going to be really moving or boosting anyway. And any characters that gain a hard cover from your cover sections gain the immunity to knockback prone and all involuntary movement and gain the benefits of your blast plating. The system can be deactivated as a protocol, but otherwise it lasts until the end of the current scene. Now, one thing that I am not 100% sure on is if you were to deactivate it, could you not activate it again? I guess not, right? So the second you deactivate it, it's pretty much done. So, you know, this is... An interesting power. I like this part, especially the fact that you can give blast plating to all of your allies. The thing that I am not 100% sure about is it's very easy to maneuver around. If you get out of the Drake's range by whatever means, it just sits there. Now, the, the point of this style is you squat down and your allies all bunch up around you. You create a fortress and... The enemies have to come to you if they want to deal with you. Otherwise, your allies will be sitting there blowing them up. This is really good if you have artillery mechs in your party with good arcing weapons, arcing blast weapons, preferably. As, as especially, they the enemies will have to come deal with you, and they can't even use arcing easily against you because your allies will be benefiting from your blast plating. This, this is a very interesting style, and something I really love about Lancer is that each mech in the game changes how you approach certain combat situations for you or for the enemies, depending on team setups. If you want to check out our, our ones play or live play of Lancer, where we had our final battle against an enemy group of Lancers, you can see very much how the play out was very much dictated by the mechs on the battlefield, which is something I really love. And the Drake is exactly that kind of mech. It's a moving fortress that your allies can use to defend themselves and the enemies will need to find ways to deal with you. And they can't just bombard you with artillery as you prevent a lot of it. And when you go into your fortress pro protocol, your allies will benefit it from, from it as well. So yeah, let's go into the license. The Drake has probably one of my favorite licenses in the game not including the mech frame in it, which again is one of my favorites. So I just, I love the Drake license. It's so good. All right, at rank one, we already get a weapon right out the gate. It's the assault cannon. It's a very fun weapon. So what it is, is it's essentially a Gatling gun, more or less. You can spin it up to make it go into its spin up mode, but when it's not in its spin up mode, 
It does a D6 plus two kinetic damage at range eight, which is not bad. And it has overkill and it does heat one to yourself. Now, this is overall not too terrible. It's a really good weapon for dealing some consistent damage. But overall, it's kind of okay. It's not a super great weapon. The damage is okay. The overkill can be really good. Though with the heat to self and the potential for the heat, like the increase in heat due to overkill, you're going to want to invest in engineering if you're using the assault cannon. Really, no matter what mech you're using, but especially if you're using the Drake. And fortunately, the Drake has a little bit of a higher heat cap. So yeah, overall, not too terrible. Now, the spin up mode is where things get really spicy. Now, the damage doesn't increase, but what does happen is... You become slowed, which is okay. You're already a slow moving mech anyway, so it's not a big deal, but your weapon gains reliable three. Now you can cease the spin up as a protocol at the beginning of your turn, meaning that you can go about business as normal. But what the big thing is, is you squat down and you just release fire. You're going to be doing a minimum of three damage no matter what you do. And I think this is well worth it, but I think it could be argued that becoming slow just to get reliable three on a weapon that can't do less than three damage anyway. It well, unless of course you miss, and in which case the reliable is good, can have its downsides. Now the heat does increase and it still has overkill. So overall, I think this is really good. And the best part is because it's reliable three, unless the enemy is very well armored, you're gonna start shredding through enemies no matter what your accuracy is which I think is really good. And I do think there's various cannon talents that can benefit from this weapon as well. So the other system that we have in the fir uh, first rank of the license is Argonaut Shield. Argonaut Shield's really good because essentially what it allows you to do is as a quick action, you can provide cover to an adjacent ally, no matter the positioning. Normally they can get hard cover from you, but if the ally is like in front of you or the enemies are attacking from different angles and you can't give them that hard cover, this allows you to give them hard cover and more than more importantly, give them resistance to all damage. Though you do take half of the damage your target would have taken before the armor and resistance. This lasts until you break adjacency, at which point the effect ceases until you repeat the action. So what's actually cool is as long as you maintain adjacency, you can absorb damage for your allies. And we already mentioned the Drake specifically, who's able to sit down and provide a bunch of cover for their allies. But you can also use Argonaut Shield in this mode. So not only is your ally getting the benefits of the hard cover from your, your barriers, but you're also giving the ally resistance to all damage, not just the blast plate resistant damage, and you are taking in some of that damage. Now, this particular system is also good for the Baylor. The Baylor is another defender-ish style mech that is very much focused on getting damage as much as possible, so it can then regenerate that damage. So if you want to check out the Baylor and see why that would be handy, I'll leave a little, uh, little card up in the top here where you can check it out. The Argonaut Shield is really, really good with the Baylor. All right, moving on to the second rank of the license. Not only do you get the Drake frame, but you get concussive missiles. Not a launcher I'm very much a fan of. It only does a D3 explosive damage within range five. The benefit is it provides knockback too, which is okay. I would rather do more damage than knockback, honestly. Knockback is one of those things where it can be handy if the enemies are constantly behind cover. But if they're behind cover, I mean, I'd rather get a launcher that does blast or something so that I could, an arcing, you know, so I could shoot around it. It's okay. This is really good for disrupting enemy movement, keeping enemies, you know, like at bay. Really good when you use something like Overwatch or something like that. But overall, I would say predominantly concussion missiles is not my favorite. I would rather have a different main launcher, but this is really good for certain play styles. And if you're going like a heavy and two of these missile launchers, you can have a fun time with it. I, I think there's a, there's 
a lot of potential with concussion missiles. It's just not my style. You know what I mean? So, but it's okay. And again, I'm always a big fan of when licenses provide weapons as that gives you more things you can shoot. There's so many licenses that don't provide many weapons, which is always really sad. So I'm really glad the Drake gives us some options when it comes to selecting different types of weapons. Aegis Shield Generator is such a good ability. I thoroughly love this because unlike a lot of different shield abilities that either create cover or just prevent fire altogether, this one I think is actually genuinely more beneficial. Now this is a limited system, so benefit or investing in your engineering, which is something you already kind of want to do with a Drake, makes this one more beneficial because then you get more access to it. But essentially as a quick action, you can drop a Aegis shield adjacent to you. It's a burst one shield. So it typically will cover yourself, maybe an ally, especially if you are guarding someone, this is really beneficial. And what happens is it creates this little shield. As a reaction, you may roll one of the D6s to reduce the damage by the amount rolled. So it gets three D6s. And these three D6s are essentially how much it mitigates. And this will last for the rest of the scene or until it loses power or is destroyed. So unless the enemy is doing massive buko hits, you're likely to get these three dice off. And the benefit to this is it's just straight damage mitigation. It doesn't make you harder to hit. It doesn't create a, an odd system where you can't like hit an enemy because you create a, a different space like some of, like the Napoleon does, for instance. But what it does is you just essentially give allies armor which is really cool. And not only that, but it can be one to six armor from a shot, no matter what kind of damage it is. I, I like this one. I like this one a lot. And with extra deployables, I mean, honestly, this is really good. I think this is one of the most solid, like general abilities. And it's just a quick action to drop it. You can skirmish after or whatever. I, I like this one. I like the Aegis Shield Generator quite a lot. All right, rank three, and we come to the Mega Gatling Gun. This is a super heavy, whoop, yep, super heavy that you can see here. Now, in its standard form, it's actually kind of interesting because it's not it it's not treated as a super heavy, essentially in its non spun up form. But similar to the assault cannon that we saw before, the Leviathan heavy assault cannon can spin up to do massive damage. But what I love about it is in its standard form, it's just a D6 with a range eight, which is really good considering that's even further than some other like mid range weapons as far as range. And you can skirmish with it. So you can do a lot of defensive things while using this assault cannon without necessarily needing to have a different weapon to do, you know, whatever you need it to. That being the case, when you spin this one up, though, the damage gets nuts. So it go it keeps the range, but it does 4d6 plus 4 damage. Now, when it's spun up, you become slowed and you can no longer skirmish with it as in its standard mode. So it pretty much just becomes a normal super heavy weapon. But it becomes one of the highest damaging super heavy weapons in the game at the cost of just becoming slowed and of course heat too. That is really good honestly and it does reliable five reliable five is an insane amount of damage on a miss the leviathan heavy assault cannon is an absolutely nuts weapon and you just you just plant down fire it off and you're just brrrr, destroying what's ever in your way i love it and and just the fact that you can then as protocol cease fire you're just back to a normal round, no extra, you know, guff, no nothing. And you have a really decent weapon in addition to that. Like this, this super heavy cannon is essentially a, a main weapon and a super heavy at the same time that you can choose the modes on based on whether you want to spin it up. Now, one of the bad things that I don't like about it is because it can be a standard kind of like heavy or a main weapon before you spin it up when you spin it up which can be done as a quick action as we can see here you can't fire the leviathan heavy assault cannon in the same round that you spin it up so unless of course 
you're overcharging, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But unless you overcharge, you can't use the the heavy assault or the super heavy mode, the spin up mode, unless you use overcharge. And this does heat to heat to yourself. So you're going to want a lot of heat mitigation on your build. Harrison Armory has a lot of good core bonuses that go really well. Honestly, and NSP or I is it NSP. IPSN, it's right there. North Star and Harrison Armory work really well together, which is very ironic considering the lore between the two. But there's a lot of good uh, Harrison Armory core bonuses that you can utilize to help the use of weapons like this. And I don't know. It's just very, very sad. We got one more thing here on the Drake. But before we get into that, if you guys are enjoying these videos, I would leave a, at least a like or subscribe if you want a higher chance of seeing this content. As you know, there's not a lot of Lancer content online and a lot of it's kind of getting on the older side. So if you enjoy Lancer content or tabletop content in general, please subscribe. And in addition, if you want to get a 100% a notification whenever I go live or whenever a new video comes out, you can join our Discord linked in the description where we talk all things tabletop. And as well, we have various groups forming all the time. So if you want a chance of finding a TTRPG group, check us out down in the description. But let's get to the last item on this particular license. All right, portable bunker. This one's pretty cool, honestly. I actually really like this one. The, the My major problem is there's a lot of things that do damage to like deployables that can rip through this in like no time flat. So yeah, but what it does is essentially it's a deployable bunker, more or less, that you can drop. It has 40 HP and it's a size four, pretty massive. It can fit, you know, the Drake in it plus two size one mechs very easily. It's a very decent defense because what happens is while you're in this bunker you have hard cover from all attacks outside the bunker and from all directions and you gain resistance to damage from blast line burst cone attacks or whatever that originate outside so more or less you get the blast plating trait while inside this bunker really good for your allies not so good for you since you already get that anyway now it's open top so you can oh you can enter and exit at will and it can't be moved or deactivated once deployed. It must be destroyed. Now, this is a limited system, so you can actually deploy this multiple times if you have a high enough engineering to get, you know, multiple limited amounts of it, more or less. I like this one. This is a really good way to change the battlefield, force enemies to either engage or to use different methods. And because they can't just use artillery to go against you, I mean, the big thing about the Drake is it's anti-artillery, which is really good because artillery enemies are the worst. They're always super far back, and you have to typically get through tons of terrain to get them. It's something that I would say in general makes the Drake and most of its license just very good for a lot of situations because because it's anti-artillery, it's also technically anti-everything else because it provides cover and everything, which is what you normally do to counter normal fire from a lot of different weapons. So the Drake just has one of the best defensive kits in the game, and a lot of it is just drop and go. You can just drop something and keep moving on as the Drake while your allies get the benefits of the defenses. And if you really want to, you can turtle up, make a bunker around yourself, set your your big gun down and go without even deploying your core bonus overall the drake is my favorite ips north star mech and my, my second favorite overall but its license is potentially one of my favorites overall of all licenses because it has a lot of things i enjoy i'm a defender player i like playing big chunky mechs and big cannon mechs as well. So a little bit of artillery, a little bit of defensiveness. The Drake fits right into my personal play style very, very well. Probably my favorite license overall, if not, you know, even if it's not my favorite frame. But I'd like to know what you all think about the Drake. Let me know down in the comments. 
your thoughts on the Drake. And hey, we got two Lancer videos off this week. That's pretty cool. I, I think I'm going to maintain this general two a week unless something else comes up. It will help me get through this a little bit faster. But as well, I know a lot of people are starting Lancer for the first time. So that being the case, the Drake is the perfect mech for introducing people to the game in a very safe play style and a very good license to invest in right out the gate as it gives you a lot of good weapons and good defensive capabilities. So as always, a preview of what we're doing next is the Death's Head. So if you want to see probably one of the best sniper mechs in the game, stay tuned. We're going to be checking out Smith Shimano's Death's Head next week. But thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.